apparently we're going. Okay. Well, welcome to Transformation Church. We are um, starting without music this morning. And um, I'm Pastor Becky, and if you're ever in the area, we'd love to invite you to come. We're, we're Facebook living from our house to yours, and, um, and we thank you for joining us. Um, whenever you're seeing it, I do believe this is always a now word for you. So um, anyway, we're going to start with prayer. So, Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for this new year that you've given us. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, that, that our best days are ahead of us. I pray that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive what you have for us. And I thank you, Father, for... Um, I pray that I would speak as an oracle of God and that, um, that, that um, again, give us all eyes to see and ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, this is the first Sunday of the year, and our group that we're with, the Sunshine Network Ministries, is doing a week, well, the 21-day fast that most church people are doing. And for some of you, you can the normal fast actually starts on um, in the evening, where you skip your evening meal and go to evening meal. So you can start today. And I'm handing out. Um, there is a prayer for this week, and that's what I'm going to kind of speak on. So what we're going to do each week is going to have a different emphasis, and the emphasis this week is going to be on our us. And I thought that was interesting that they did that. Then we'll be the community, and then it'll be the world. Um, we will pray for, at some point, pray for President Trump, because there have been a couple prophecies. One I just, someone sent me last night that's fresh with Charlie Champ. Champ? That's H-A-M-P. Um, anyway, felt like we needed to pray against an assassination for the president. And I've seen that like on three different things, so I didn't want to ignore that. We should pray for the president anyway. But um, the, emphasis, the, the scripture for the day is 3 John chapter 2. Or, <laughs> 3 John is a chapter. It's only one chapter. So there's John, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, not to be confused with the book of John. And in verse 2 it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as you prosper. And the prayer that we'll pray, or um, at least I gave them a sheet, you should pray every day this week, um, and it's up to you if you want to do that or not. But if we're not blessed, we can't be a blessing. And I normally don't even go here, to be honest with you. I would have just handed out the prayer and say, you know, pray it. You want to pray it? Pray it. If you don't, you don't. And in fact, if you want to fast, fast. If you don't, don't. Um, and fasting, I'm telling you, one of the biggest and most effective fasts I've ever been on. <laughs> and um, some of them here <laughs> will, will remember was fasting negativity. And during that fast that I did, so you can't, let's say you're, maybe you're diabetic or whatever, you're very limited to what to, whether you can actually fast a food or not. Some people cannot do that medically. They're, they just can't, they have to stick to a certain thing. Um, I would encourage you to do a fast of negativity. During that 30, I did, I did this 30 day fast of negativity because I felt like God said to do it. And it was during then that um, we were, we flew out to my husband's, um, her, his daughter was getting married in Oklahoma. And on the way back, do you, I don't know if you remember this or not, we got delayed. Now, we didn't know it was only going to be an hour delay, then a two-hour delay. It ended up being a 10-hour delay. 11. 11? Oh, my husband's telling me 11-hour delay. Ooh. And I'm fasting negativity. Now... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put out there again, you either like us or you don't. This is just gonna be honest here. But the truth is, I I can blame it on this. I know it's the devil, but I'm gonna blame it on I'm a little bit hot boiled Italian. Um, and I can, my blood can get boiling fairly easy. And, Amen. Uh, <laughs> and especially if I haven't had enough sleep. So um, I remember Dr. Colbert telling me once he was our doctor back in the day and um, and I was sleep deprived and didn't know it. I was literally, I didn't recognize the, all my symptoms. He said, oh, your, your problem is you're just not sleeping. And I'm like, what? Um, if you need to turn that fan off if you're cold, you're welcome to. I'll just put it okay. um, Anyway, so he said, what happens when people are sleep deprived? And I'm sure he said it for the benefit of my husband. Um, they either make you want to cry or they cry. 
or sometimes both. So if you're having one of those problems, you might want to check into sleep deprivation. So normally, I would have been, hor I mean, especially once the first hour, I might have been all right. Second hour, not so much. By the 10th or 11th, uh, really not okay. <coughs> and I felt for the, there were families that had little guys, you know, the little the families, because we went, um, what was the airline? Allegiant. Allegiant that goes out, out from here. And it was, I mean, they have great prices, by the way. And I will say the staff was stellar with what they had to work with. Um, but I don't care who you are. You've got a fa young family. But there were people just griping and complaining, and it would have been so easy to join. <laughs> but I had made the determination, and thankfully I was well into the fast by this point. You need to turn that off too. My sound off. Anyway, long story short, um, we started, we gathered a group that evidently there are people out there that aren't hot-blooded or don't get too upset about anything na naturally. Well, birds of a feather tend to flock together, right? So we ended up with this group. We started cracking jokes because I was determined. I was not going to be negative. And by this point, again, I had been in it long enough. I could actually see things to be thankful for. And um, I just did. I, it, and I, I don't know. I got off the beam. I'll tell you this. I, I need to get back there. Um, but it was so interesting to, just to tell you what the fast did. Um, the flight attendants and stuff that were having to help us and that were getting people literally raining them out. And and, and they were supposed to give us vouchers for something to eat because a lot of people didn't plan on eating. You know, they weren't. And once they finally, finally, and I mean it was probably nine hours into it, got us the vouchers, all that was open was a place where you get junk food. It was just like, oh, oh I'm serious. I mean, we're talking junk food, overpriced junk food. But, um, well, we did it. But so the, the, the employees of the, the airlines were so thankful that we had this group going and we were calm and we were joking with them and, and we kept thanking them. And we thought, I even said, you know, I felt really bad to, because one of the ladies got, she, I mean, she didn't do anything. And, um, and I'm like, I really feel bad that you, you know, this, I, we, I just know, some of us know this isn't your fault and you're just trying to help us. So they gave us extra snacks that they were getting for free. They said, here, take it. I mean, we were getting favor right and left. And then when we got on the airplane, I guess some things had changed. And they gave us, moved us up to a nicer seat, um, gave us another snack. <laughs> we snacked out. And um, I was doing the keto program, which I pretty much live on. But that was probably one of the few times for months I really was faithful. I, I, um, enjoyed the chocolate chip cookies <laughs> and that kind of thing so um it is a genuine fast to fast negativity i i dare you to try it i really do give it a try um you know because your your life may not lend itself to to fasting food and i don't think god meant for it to be legalistic because um i know he didn't that he does th when he asks us to do things it's because it's going to benefit us in some way not to make it a hardship um you know i wasn't planning on going here but i'm going to help me here. I think it's Matthew, I think, Matthew chapter 17. Let me look in here. I'm taking a whole different turn because I just heard something else in the spirit. You know where it talks about um, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting? Matthew 12? Is that what it is? Is that what you said? 17, I think, but Matthew 12 17. might be right. Everybody's going to help me find it Matthew here. Matthew 17? Uh, chapter 17? Chapter 17, I think. Verse? That's what I don't know. What was the scripture? About this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. I know some of you are probably going, it's 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 this, but I can't hear you. Um, I, you know what? I'll type in Matthew this. seventeen twenty one. Seventeen Matthew seventeen twenty one. Well, I did remember part of it. You may want to back up though. Yes, I do. All right, so let's go to Matthew chapter seventeen and see how far I have to back up. And I'm going to do Amplified Classic just because I find it's one of my favorites. Hopefully, it'll fit for this one. Okay, let me go to. All right, so basically, they were at the Mount of Transfiguration. Um, I'm not going to go into that. And verse 9 says, And they were coming, going down the mountain. Jesus cautioned and commanded, commanded them, Do not mention to anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. So he's just saying, What you saw, that's not for anybody else to know about. You know, be quiet. 
And so, um, I want to jump down again. So verse 13, then the disciples understood that he spoke to them about John the Baptist when he, because they had seen Elijah. Um, actually, I should have gone down further. You can read that part for yourself. All right, here we are. Verse 14, and when they approached the multitude, a man came up to him, kneeling before him, and him being Jesus, and saying, Lord, do pity and have mercy on my son, for he has epilepsy, is um, moonstruck was what they were calling it. But, and I, we don't know if it actually was epilepsy or not, but he was having some kind of seizure. And he suffers terribly, for frequently he falls into the fire, and many times into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they were not able to cure him. And Jesus answered, Oh, you unbelieving, warped, wayward, rebellious, and thoroughly perverse generation, how long am I to remain with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. And he said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith, that is, your lack of um, firmly relying trust, for truly I say unto you, if you have faith that is living like a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And um, I know, I remember I was raised in church. Some of you were. A lot of people weren't. Um, and I was taught that it was that demon. I don't know what you all were teaching, but I was taught that it was that demon that could not come out. You had to have prayer and fasting for that particular demon to come out. And if that's true, how would you know? Why is one demon stronger than the other? And the Bible tells us that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, that we've been given all authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that's Luke ten nineteen. So if, if that's true, if we've been given all authority, and we have authority over the devil, then there's not one demon that's more powerful than the other demon against our ability um, to stand in the name of Jesus. So if you really read that there, what what they were saying, what doesn't go out without prayer and fasting is unbelief. It was their unbelief because, because um, you know, you go back and you read that, and it's like the disciples had been given, he said, go out and lay hands on the sick, and he sent them out two, two by two, if you remember that part. And when they came back to go, oh, well, even the demons are subject to us. So they obviously had cast out demons, and they obviously thought they could or they wouldn't have prayed for this guy, this son. And um, and so I thought that was interesting that we always thought, so it's, it's the unbelief. So I know I'm entering into a fast, um, you know, I, I've got some areas where I do believe that I'm dealing with unbelief, that I just need, if fasting strengthens me, against unbelief, which I've done this before and it actually does work. Um, you know, God didn't, he didn't put it there again to cause us to be aggravated or just to have our stomach growl at us or that kind of thing. It, it, it has a purpose and it's not, it's not to move God. I was also taught, you know, if you fast and pray long enough, God will do this thing for you. Well, he's already done everything he's going to do. Read Ephesians chapter one. It says, for God's given us everything we need for life and godliness. Um, well, or, or giving us every blessing, every spiritual blessing. And anyway, we've already got it. That's a whole other story. Everything he's going to do by Jesus Christ stripes, First Peter two twenty four. We were healed. That means we are healed. So we're not trying to get him to do something. We're trying to get connected with him so that we're flowing with him, so that we have what he has for us. And the the main thing that will stop us from receiving. Well, there's three three reasons for unbelief. And um, you know, and I. I like I said, I wasn't planning on this, so I know that this is a now word because the Holy Spirit's dropping it on me. So I'm not prepared to give you all the scripture references, and I can probably put something in there later. But the first, the first reason you would have unbelief is that you're ignorant. You don't know. No one's ever told you. For instance, if you were raised in a church that said, um, you know, healing's not for today. A lot of churches believe that. Or they even believe um, God's doing this to teach you a lesson. That sickness that you're dealing with or that poverty that you're dealing with, he's trying to teach you a lesson. And it sounds spiritual and it sounds like, oh yeah. Now, well, can you learn lessons from? God will take something and, and go ahead and teach you something, but um, he's not bringing it on. For one thing, the, the main scripture that I started out with today, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. It's above all things. I'm going to 
to say that again, above all things. So it's more important to God than it is to us that we prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. That's important to God, above all things. And it said, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, so it would be on earth. There's no sickness in heaven. If by Jesus Christ's stripes we were healed, then we are healed, then he's not bringing sickness on you. And if you believe that, and I, this sounds harsh, but it's the truth. If you believe that God wants you to be sick, then you should stop taking your medicine. You should stop going to doctors. You should stop doing any of this stuff. And just let the pain come, because God wants you to be in pain. God wants you to you suffer or something. I mean, if you really take that to its furthest degree, it's ridiculous, right? I mean, it really is. So, so when you, some of you need to. I, again, I was not planning on doing this. I have, I have notes that you're not even. We're not going there. Um, that I spent time doing, but, but this is more important because it's what God wanted to say today. So first of all, you need to know what the Word of God says. It's extremely important to at least read, at least read, if nothing else, a Proverbs or a you know a, a, a Psalms. Read the Bible at least every day. And I, I'm going to do this myself for the 21 days. It's just something I personally want to do. I'm going to focus on the Book of Ephesians. The Book of Ephesians is just chocked full of well, it's got two major prayers in it that that we pray that the eyes of our, our understanding would be enlightened so that we would know what God has for us. Because ignorance, you know, with that, what is it, what's the Bible say? Um, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Um, so it's lack of vision and lack of knowledge. Well, you can't have vision without knowledge. So for, you need to get into the Word of God. i got my Bible over here. My actual, I've got my Bible on my tablet too. But anyway, I've got the real deal here. I've got my tablet here. Um, but the, it's the Word of God, so we need to know what God's Word says for us. Um, I mean, I can, I can sit here right now. We've got a, a gentleman here that is in sales and retail sales. And the devil wouldn't want um, Mike to know that he can, he can supersede any, um, any top, anybody's top numbers because God is with him. And that's God's desires, because he said, I, I, and I, I saw this last night, this part, when I was just studying on it. I, I kind of know it just caught my attention. Above all things. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. We were taught, I don't even know how I got this, but we were taught that God, you know, poverty is next to godliness somehow. And boy, that has been a hard thing for me to outroot. Uproot. Now I was taught healing. I had that part. I, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not perfectly, but I did believe God wanted me healed. But prosperous? Mm, that was a real. That was a. That was a tough one, and um, and I'm getting more and more as I'm, you know, studying His Word to know He actually wants us to prosper, and um, and it's not a dirty word. I mean, a lot of people think prosperity. Um, there was a song somebody did. I lost my chapter here. Um, I guess I don't need it. Um, prosperity, prosperity, <coughs> making fun of it. Um, we had a Christian comedian one time back in the 90s. And, but, you know, if you don't want your prosperity, I'll take yours. Because you know what? It takes money to get stuff done. And if you're constantly worried about your own situation, it's really hard to be a blessing to someone, even in Walmart. When you see somebody that can't pay for everything and have to put something back, and you want so bad to just say, here, let me pay for it. But you can't because you don't have it. I mean, and what a witness it is to be able to do that, to have, be able to. Uh, I know um, I know somebody that they set up an account just for that. for they, they literally put money in there, and they use that account, and they wait till the Holy Spirit shows them who, which person, and they just do, do that. Um, <coughs> so... I wish above all things that you'd prosper. But if you don't even believe that, if you're ignorant of the fact that God want, wants you to, then you might need to use the fasting and prayer time to, to get that, that unbelief out. And, and along with the fasting and prayer, make sure you're in the Word of God. And um, if you have a, a certain subject that you're interested in or have some questions, just Facebook Live us. And um, it's, if, if we can answer you, we will. And if we can't, I'll say it. I don't know. I'll just tell you. But... Um, Probably we can help you. 
And uh, so this kind only comes out. So so the one kind of unbelief is that you just don't know. You, how could you believe in something you don't even know is available to you? The second kind of unbelief, um, and I would have had scriptures, but I wasn't planning on going here. But the second kind of unbelief is um, you might know something, but you're not fully aware of everything that, that it has to do with it. You still need more knowledge on it. You still need more information on it. Um, I think that the hardest kind of a belief to deal with is that you already know, you really believe it, but there's just something in there you can't grab a hold of. And that's the kind of a belief I'm, I'm going to fast for, that I can get rid of whatever is causing that, because I know it's mine. But sometimes there's a disconnect in knowing that it's yours and actually obtaining it. So I would encourage you to spend, and again, and you can fast. There's a Daniel fast. I don't have scriptures here, but there's a Daniel fast. Um, it's 21-day fast that Daniel went on. Um, it was um, just fruits and vegetables and water, right? And, um, you know, if you're on keto, that would be just <laughs> completely opposite. Um, but anyway, you can do a Daniel fast. Some people live a fasted life. Um, I realize that there are people out there that do that. Um, some people go on just water. Some people go on no water. Actually, keto is a type of fast. Yeah, keto is a different kind of fast. So it's a, it's more of a fasted life. Um, you know, it's just different for, for everybody. But whatever that means to you, and, and again, and if you can't, if food's not the thing you can deal with, some people would do you, a, it would really do you, um, be positive, turn off the TV, turn off your your, your devices, and maybe just for 24 hours. No. You might not be able to do that for 21 days because you've got to stay in contact with the world. But um, you know, maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's there's you know there's got there's something. It doesn't have to be. I'm just not going to eat any food for 21 days, and I'm not going to drink any water. I wouldn't even suggest that unless you're you know checking with your doctor. So because um, that could get dangerous. So um, and if you disagree, oh well. I disagree with you. So. <laughs> But he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as you're, you prosper. So first of all, get a hold of the fact that he wants you to prosper. And that's talking, you know, we need to prosper spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. We need to prosper in our relationships. We need to prosper in every area of our life. And, and that's God's will for us. And some people get a hold of it and you look at them and go, Man, why? what are they doing right? That, you know, why am I having... Um, and I have to say this, why am I not doing as well as they are? Well, because you're putting up with it. Uh, and I'm speaking to myself. Because, you know, if you're going to put up with it, you'll stay putting up with it for the rest of your life. There's a, um, Terry Savelle Foy, she said this, and it just, it rings in my ears. She said, it's not Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Some day, some day never comes. And we do that, especially if you're a procrastinator. I'm going to do it someday. It's because in your mind, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. No, you're not. If you don't set a time to do it, like just like fasting, if we don't set a time and what we're going to do, you're never going to do it. And if you don't get into the Word of God and find out what's yours, you're never going to have it. And people, I can hear somebody saying right now, well, I know some wicked people and they're prospering. They're just, you know, they're, they've got money flowing everywhere. They, they, have a yacht or whatever. Um, the Bible says when God blesses us, he adds no sorrow with it. They may have all that. There was an actress um, where the fan came up and she had to push her dress down. Oh, oh Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe had everything and she committed suicide. How many times does that happen? Because money in itself doesn't bring happiness. I will have to say I'd prefer to have it than not have it. But that in itself will not bring you happiness. In fact, depending on how, like these people that win the lottery, their cousins come out of the wall, woodwork, and everybody knows them, and everybody's there for the party time, but then most people, because they didn't know how to handle money before and win the lottery, they're going to be broke again anyway, and, and then the friends and all of those people go away. So money in itself will not, I, I even, I feel for people like, um, like T Tim Tebow, back in the, you know, I know, I believe he got married or he's getting married. Um, I, I do, yeah, I saw him with, was she Italian, was she Brazilian? Anyway, 
it. I have to look it up. But nonetheless, I've often thought about how hard it would be to be a born again Christian who takes a stand for God, who has some wealth and some notoriety that, excuse me, but the gold diggers just, I don't know if the younger generation would know what that meant. Um, how, how else could you say gold digger? Just, that's it. Well, that's it. Okay. Um, that a gold digger, that, that somebody that just wants you because of your position or whatever, they're not in, in love with you, that how hard it would be to find the right person. So money in itself has its own issues. But by far, I would prefer to have the money and have the issues than not. Because not having money, we, those of us, most of us know that not having the money has issues. When your, you know, car breaks down and, um, you know, your washing machine needs repair or breaking down or all this stuff happens. And, you know, the, there's a lot more month at the end of the money. And, um, you know, that, that's where most of us tend to live. But that's not God's will. God's, you know, people go, well, thy, thy will be done. He just told you. I wish above above all things he wants us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. And I think that the Jewish people get this more. It, it's very unusual to find a poor Jewish person. They don't even consider it. And even the, um, remember the disciples said, because when he said it's going to be, it'll be easier for a rich um, camel. A camel. What? To go, go through the eye, eye of the needle. needle. To go, yeah, it would be easier to go through the eye of the ne needle. For a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to come into the kingdom. And then, I think it was Peter, one of the disciples said, well, who in the world can get there then? And obviously that meant, because come on, right before he was launched into ministry, that's when Jesus said to Peter, launch your nets over onto the other side. And he's like, yeah, right, the fish have been hiding on the other side. We could go into that whole thing. But he got a, he had to call his friends because... He had such a catch, it's almost sunk his boat and his friend's boat. There was enough fish caught to, to um, take care of his family, to, to um, pay for probably a couple of years' worth of ministry, because that, that was their livelihood. I mean, it all came in. So we were just at Reinhard Bunke's memorial service. Um, he was the CEO or president, founder of um, evangelist Reinhard Bunke of Christ for All Nations, CFAM. And he started out with little or nothing, but, you know, he, if he had learned how to receive finances and receive um, the stamina, it sounds like his, his assistant was quite a bit younger than him, and he said, even almost to the end, he could hardly keep up with him. He just had a, such a stride in his walk, and, and he was, um, you know, but it takes millions of dollars to run that kind of organization. And yet, at the he died at age seventy nine, and they they said they added it was seventy nine million something 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 people that were saved, registered, signed. It wasn't just they wouldn't take people to say I got saved, that that received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and he you know he couldn't have done it without funds to do that. You can't. And many times, like you know, if you go, your daughter's went on missions trips, and um, you go on these missions trips. It costs you to go. You don't make money going overseas most of the time. You don't make money, period. Just it, but, but we need to get the gospel out. So, yes, do you need to prosper financially? Oh, boy, I just heard the Holy Spirit say something. <laughs> oh, oh, it has to be him because I my personality doesn't go here very often. I just heard him say, um, you, it takes a very, very selfish person to not want to prosper. Because if you think, well, I'm okay, you know, we're paying our bills, we're making it, um, then who can, you don't care about anybody else. You don't care if the whole world goes to hell. We need to get eternity-minded. One of the things Reinhard Bunke, his sayings were saying was, was populating heaven and plundering hell. Or did he say plundering hell and populating heaven? I don't know, either way. Um, and he would always go, are you happy? <laughs> Um, we need to populate heaven. We need to plunder hell. The, the real, if we really believe there's a heaven and a hell, then we need to have health in our physical body. We need to have wealth. We need to have the finances to do what we need to do. It was so striking to me. We went to, um, after we left the memorial service, we went to visit somebody on that side of town, quite a ways away from here. And... Um, I saw a lot of street people because we were down off of Orange. Where were we? 
we were on the South Orange Blossom South Orange Blossom Trail where there's quite a few interesting folk. And um, just for those that don't know, we're talking about prostitutes, drug addicts, the whole thing. And um, I was seeing some of those people and I don't know, they just stuck out to me yesterday. And I'm thinking, what a waste of a life. We just went to a memorial service where we'd make almost anybody feel like I don't ma me, you know, I don't measure up. But then there was this other element on the other end of the pendulum who have thrown their their lives away to drugs and alcohol and prostitution, literally living the life that's nothing full, not worth living. And it was just such a, a, a comparison, shocking comparison actually. So that's not, God's will is for everyone. He's not willing that any should perish. And if he said above all, above all, I wish that you would prosper, uh, you know, or beloved. In fact, I heard um, Marilyn Hickey say, she says, um, Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, this is beloved Marilyn coming to you today. And um, she said, she called herself, she said, because I'm his beloved. And maybe we need to start doing that. This is beloved Becky coming to you, and you wish above all things that beloved Becky prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. She put your name in there, because that's the truth. He wishes above all things, but the key being as your soul prospers. Because when we get born again, we, you know, we get saved, our spirit man is totally born again and complete, perfect, but if you've been saved five hours, only five hours, let's say you've only known Jesus for five hours, you figured out by that time, it only takes about five hours, maybe a day for some of you, to know that your thinker, feeler, doer, your soul, <laughs> didn't quite get that same change or transformation, as we would call it. That's a, that's a process. And we'll be in the process of our soul prospering until Jesus comes, until we go to heaven, until our day comes to go home. And I think that the neat thing as a Christian we know, we just shed this earth suit and we just move on. That's all that happened to Reinhardt. I mean, he just moved on to a much better place. And, and when I was sharing this morning, the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. He looks forward to us coming home. In the meantime, we're supposed to occupy till he comes, so we've got work to do here. And it takes mun, hun, dojo. It does. It takes money, and it takes health to be able to do the things. Um, there's one lady sitting here today who can make me tired just watching what she does. <laughs> she, I mean, how many of you, I, I can't see your hands, but you can raise your hand, have met a person like that. It's like Superwoman or Superman. They just, I think Reinhardt was a superman like that. They just can just go, 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 go. And they've got so many irons in the fire, but it doesn't even disturb them. They just do it all. They do it all with excellence, and you're like, ah! <laughs> and, and they don't recognize it. I, be, I do believe that. They don't even recognize how awesome that, it, that is. But you, it takes knowing what God has for you. And putting your, you know, focusing. The one thing they said about Reinhardt is he had focus. I mean, he would get focused and he would get that thing done. Um, and I know that probably being around someone that, that focused sometimes can be hard on the spouse or the children. Um, <laughs> or the co-workers, maybe. Um, but in the, in the end of it, praise God, things get done. Right? And so he believed... And I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So maybe you're dealing with weakness, but that's not God's will for you. He wants us to be strong. He wants us mentally strong. So you're, you're, you are spirit, soul, and body. The minute you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your spirit is totally recreated. You are just like God. That part of you is God inside out, upside down, in every which way. You have one-third of you as dead-raising power of God in you. You can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It's all there. You've got to access it, but it's all there. But the next part of us, are, are, are so we're spirit, soul. The soul is your thinker, feeler, doer. That's where our biggest struggle can be. And then, depending on how you think about it, then your body, obviously we, we get the body. The body's screaming at you. So the biggest unbelief can come, and I think this is what happened with the disciples when they prayed for that boy. Because um, once the, when Jesus prayed for him, 
he threw him, he, th he convulsed or had a, what is it, a seizure. A seizure. <clears throat> and I, I had a girlfriend that um, we were in the, the Wisconsin district choir. We were, they picked two kids from each school and she and I were picked from our school in elementary school and um, her mom had epilepsy. And they had to keep a close pin so that they would put it, clamp it on her tongue so that she wouldn't swallow her tongue or chew it and bleed. Um, and so they had these, so it's a really scary thing. And so you can imagine if you were a disciple and this, you prayed for this kid, you've seen demons leave before, but then he all of a sudden convulses. I think it would shake some of us all, most of us up. That would be a little un disarming. So the unbelief can come in that our eyes and our ear, our five senses are yelling louder than our faith, than our belief. So easy to be done, especially if you're dealing with pain, or you can, or let, you know, you're seeing somebody have a seizure. It can be so easy. So that did not throw Jesus off, though. If they had had more belief, they would have recognized. Because a lot of times, um, if you've done any deliverance ministry at all. Um, what happens is the, the, um, the devil will try to put on a show for you, and they'll react. We, we prayed for this one lady. Um, we were traveling for three years as evangelist, and she had a reaction, and, and um, she started spitting at me, going, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And she was digging her nails into my arm. This one just sticks out because I should have had blood coming out. I didn't even have a fingernail print that was totally gone, and I just... Had so much faith at that moment because we just were flowing in faith. And I'm going to get back there and beyond. But all I could do was laugh at her because I knew this devil had to go and it was putting on this show. And we hate you, you know, like we hate you. Okay, whatever. Eddie and I were praying for her. Um, it, long story short, once it got done with the show and we laughed and we were like, just get out. And it did. It was over. And her husband even gave us a, a sizable check for that day. Um, and, uh, one evening, because we were there for a bit longer, just he said, "Just thank you so much." <laughs> so I don't know what what was going on with his wife at that point, but the point being, I hope I haven't, is that when the devil puts on a show, a lot of people think, "Well, it's not working." And we had enough God belief in us; the doubt was not there. That you know we were. We were living a fasted life and the fact that we had given everything we were traveling we didn't even you know basically live out of a suitcase um you know and just be doing services twice a day six days a week and so we were seeing phenomenal things happen but it should be the norm for every every christian it should be our norm so you can't look at the reaction of the enemy and say oh no it's not working you can't and i've had to do this you cannot look at the reaction of your body when you're believing for healing to manifest and if you do you are you're gonna be the devil's gonna beat you up he's just gonna have have a um, I've had this progressive work because I I believe I'm and it's funny because when I first found out I had diabetes which is I don't have anything I don't even have to have a blood test done I should give a praise report about this I've been standing for healing um, but when I first found out that I had diabetes I went on a three-day fast to fast for this very reason, and it was I did a, just a water fast for three days to get rid of the unbelief. And when I got done and checked my sugar, I was totally like it was clear. Um, and the, you know, but then the devil. I want to say this: the devil will try to come back and put those symptoms back on you most of the time. So instead of being upset about that, which it is upsetting when you think, well, I thought I, I thought this was over. Well, the devil, he knows if he can catch you in a weak moment. And I'm not trying to magnify the devil, but my people perish for a lack of knowledge. You need to recognize he's going to try to come back. And he's going to try to put that symptom on. And if you accept it, you get it back. I, don't, I can't tell you I know why. I don't know why it has to be this way. But we're in a, <laughs> we're in a battle. I mean, it said we're fighting the good fight of faith. And some of us would rather um, not fight. And some of you are like the old cigarette commercial, which I can't remember, but Lucky Strike, I'd rather fight than switch. Um, you know, that tells you how old I am. Google it for you younger people. Um, but it said I'd rather fight than switch. Well, we need to get there. We need, I'd rather fight than switch. There's no way I want to go into the kingdom of hell. 
And you know what? Sin's fun for a season, but when that, that season's over, there's hell to pay. Um, I know so many people that started out, I mean, it was so much fun to go out and party and drink and get drunk and do whatever, but then until you get pregnant, right? Or until you get some kind of um, sexually transmitted disease or until you, you're, you realize, I have to have a drink every day now and I have to have two or three because I'm addicted or until you kill somebody because you're drunk driving. You know, God's never, uh, we, we did a young adults group at one point, ages 18 to 30, not married. And um, that question kept coming up like, you know, what's God trying to take care of all our fun away? I'm like, uh, duh, no. And you'd think some of them would figure because by the time they came to us, it was sad. They had already messed, their, one had already, she had a first abortion at, at age 14. And, um, we were having to pick up the pieces and you know pray them through those things. And by the way, I don't care what sin you've committed. Sin is sin. One's not bigger than the other in God's eyes. We just repent and we move on. And once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been forgiven now and you're forgiven forevermore. Unless you choose to wake, walk away from God, you're you're there. He's not going to take you out of his hands. He said you're in his hand unless you choose to walk away. Um, that's your choice. But... Um, don't be condemned. I hope I don't want any of this to be condemning. I want it to be encouraging. Say, I will not be condemned. Say that I will not be condemned. Not so, not be condemned. I'm telling you, 2020 can be the best year that you've ever had. I believe every one of us in this room is going to be the best year we have spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. And when all of those areas are clear, then the, the relationships get straightened out. All of that other stuff comes. Because a lot of times you need healing in your emotions, but you cannot sit there and dwell on your thinker, feeler, doer and have victory. And that may be why you need to fast to keep that. That's where the unbelief comes. It comes in the eye gate, the ear gate how you feel, the emotions, all of those things are fighting against you. But um, find out what the Word of God says. Stand on the Word of God. Ha you know, I want to encourage you, um, find a faith partner. Find somebody that when you're like, you're floundering or whatever, that you can call up and, and say, you know, I need you to pray for me. Um, I need you to stand in agreement with me. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, God, you know, when you think about it, Jesus sent them out two by two for a reason. Um, there's a scripture that says that, that it's better to have two by two because if one falls, then there's somebody to pick, pick them up. And so it's real important to find a faith partner, find somebody that you can, um, and be discreet in how you do that. <laughs> as we know, there, um, there are people that masquerade as angels of light. So you, you will know down in your door if it's a safe person. There are some people that you know, you can say whatever you need to say and it's okay. There are other people, uh, the minute you say it, the whole world's going to know. Just being honest with you. So be, you know, be thinking about that when you choose that person. So again, beloved, I wish above all, I wish above all things to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So as we enter 2020, and you go, I believe this, if you go into this 21 days of fasting, however, whether you fast um, devices, whether you fast negativity, whether you fast food, whatever kind of food you're fasting, um, that you will fast the unbelief out. And begin to study this, This um, just stand on the scripture that God, and say, you look in the mirror and say, God loves me, I am his beloved. And that, you might choke on it the first few times, say, you know, I'm, I'm your beloved. Because um, God, you know, what, God thinks you're awesome. He does. Um, and I started saying, one of the things I started saying, you know, God thinks I'm awesome. Just ask my dad. He thinks I'm awesome. So, um, and he thinks you're awesome too. Because he knows what he's planned for you. It, um, I encourage you to read Ephesians chapter um, 2, verse 10 in the Amplified Version. It talks about that God's prepared ahead of time. Um, someone have it? You have it there? Well, let's go ahead and read it. Get quick. 2.20. Did I say 220? I apologize. You're getting hot off the press here because this was not the message of the day. Classic. 210? Yes. Which the version? Amplified Classic. Just read it out. Amplified Classic. There we go. 
For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand, for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living in the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Did you hear that? Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. You start reading the Bible and you're going to find out more and more God has the good life for you to live. He's prearranged it. It's just as if um, I, you lived here in Florida and you needed to get to New York and um, you've got an airplane ticket. Well, God's paid, paid for the airplane ticket. All you have to do is take the ticket, go to the airport. You need to get on the plane. You need to get off the plane when you get to New York. That's your part. But he's predestined. You, you are then predestined to go to New York. So predestined doesn't have anything to do with, well, whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera. No, if, you know, I'm predestined, so it's just going to happen. No, you're predestined if you take the ticket, if you get on the airplane, if you get off the airplane. Then you get to your destination. So take the ticket. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And we're going to take the next 21 days to just um, get that soul part of us knowing what it needs to know, listening to what it needs to listen to, seeing what it needs to see. And um, I'm personally going to be, like I said, reading Ephesians. And, and I'm going to be praying the Ephesians 1, 16 through um goes through two, chapter 2, uh, the whole prayer there where it talks about the eyes of, I ask for a spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of my, um, uh, the eyes of my heart might be enlightened, that I'll know what I have in Christ, that I will know more of what I have. Um, Kenneth e. Hagen, Papa Hagen, who's in heaven, he started praying that prayer and then the one in chapter 3 where I can know the exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think, he, that there's a prayer there. Um, he said, I would read it and just lay it on, because he had a uh, parsonage that was next to the church. And every time he would go into the church to go to a study, he had it on the altar there. And he would read through it and pray that prayer over himself. And he would insert his name in there. And he said, after about six weeks, he goes, I'm thinking, why in the world this deacon board even hasn't, you know, hasn't, did he say, kick me out into the rain? Because he said, no, had to bring me in out of the rain. Had to bring me in out of the rain because he said, I found out I didn't know very much because <laughs> God started to reveal things to him. And that was the beginning of his knowing more and more and more what God had for him and living in it. I mean, he had a real struggle with finances and how God revealed to him he wanted him to prosper and did prosper. Um, but before that, he actually wore his car out, was walking to his preaching assignments or hitchhiking because he didn't even have money and his kids weren't properly clothed and they didn't live in a big... They were living in uh, a one-bedroom place where the one son was sleeping on a, a, a rollaway bed that they put out at night in the kitchen because that was, that was where they slept. But he finally got hold of what God was saying, and then he started living it and was able to share it. So I want to encourage you um, to, to pray this prayer. We, I, can, um, I actually can email it to you. So if you're watching uh, on the Internet, on Facebook Live, and you ask for it, I will, I will, um, I will email it to you. I think I've said enough. It makes sense today? Cause it wasn't, I, I had my one, two, three, something else. I mean, I was going to start with that passage just because we were going to pray this prayer, but that wasn't what I was going to talk about. Well, Lord, we thank you. We're going to pray this prayer, and I'll pray it. I'll say one sentence, and I'll let you repeat it, because they've got a copy that you don't. Um, and again, we're gonna. This is the week one prayer for our, our individual, our person. So, um, all right, just just read it after me. I declare that 2000. Well, I'm gonna say it again. I declare that 2020 will be a year of prosperity for me. I declare that 2020 will be a year of prosperity for me. I will have doors of opportunity to open on my schooling. I will have doors, doors of opportunity to open in my schooling, schooling my profession, my profession, my finances, my finances, and my relationships. And my relationships. And my relationships. The Lord's direction in my life will become clearer. The Lord's direction in my life will become clearer. And relationships that need to be mended will heal. And relationships that need to be mended will heal. While those that are harmful, and those let me say, while those relationships that are harmful. 
Those relationships, relationships that, that are harmful, harmful and keep me from my purpose and, and keep, keep me from, from my purpose, purpose will be cut off. Will be cut off. off. The blessing of the Lord will be evident in my life. The blessing of the Lord will be evident in my life. And provide opportunities for me to share His goodness with others. And provide opportunities for me to share His goodness with others. My spiritual life will prosper as well. My spiritual life will prosper as well. And the Holy Spirit will bring revelation. And the Holy Spirit will bring revelation. And greater understanding to me. And greater understanding to me. As I spend time in the world. As I spend time in the Word. Oh, the Word. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got tickled. My, my health will also prosper. Including my, my eyes. will also will prosper. prosper. And healing will take place in areas where sickness once was. And healing will take place in areas where sickness once was. I will receive supernatural strength in my spirit and body. I will receive supernatural strength in my spirit and body. 2020 will be a year of prosperity for me. 2020 will be a year of prosperity for me. Because as, what does it say? As my soul prospers. As my soul prospers. It, all right. Because as my soul prospers. Because as my soul prospers. It is God's overwhelming desire to see me blessed. It is God's overwhelming desire to see me blessed. All right. That's something that you can proclaim over yourself daily. And again, I will be happy to send, to, to send it via email or you know, whatever. I have a PDF file I can get to you. Um, I want to encourage you to do that, to start tonight, uh, or you might want to start tomorrow. Up to you. Go 21 days if you want to. Go no days if you want to. Go five days. You know, it's got to be something that you want to do um, and desire to do. I do believe that if you do this um, in 21 days, I'm expecting some... I'm going to have some personal testimonies. I'm expecting testimonies from, um, uh, and so we have to believe it. And again, I just feel strongly that God's saying the, the fast that we need to go on, and for those that are, because you're, you're not watching this by accident, is a fast to fast out the unbelief. Because that's what's stopping. But generally the log jam just, it, it stops everything up. And, uh, Spiritual constipation. <laughs> My husband said spiritual constipation. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to um, close for this part. I'm going to pray with you. If you're not 100% sure if you were to die today that you'd go to heaven, that is just number, number, number one. You can't, you're, you're just totally not going anywhere without God. Well, you are. You just go in the wrong direction. But there really is a heaven, and there really is a hell, and heaven's much better, and forever is a long time. I mean, I don't think we have a concept of how long forever is. And so I, I want to invite you, because you're probably going, you know, especially I want to invite you to receive Jesus, begin to say this prayer, and begin to, to um, follow us as we go through this 21 days. And um, I'll be doing something daily. Let me commit myself to that. Um, I'll be doing something daily, Facebook Live, for the 21 days, even if it's a little five-minute blurb. We'll just do that and um, pray together daily. So um, if you're not 100% sure if you were to die today that you'd go to heaven, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe, I believe in the name, name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I believe you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. I believe you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. I ask you to forgive my sin. I ask you to forgive my sins. I receive forgiveness. I receive forgiveness. Take my life. Take my life. And do something super with it. And do something super with it. Fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit. Fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my ears to hear, and my heart to receive all that you have for me. And my heart to receive all that you have for me. I'll never be the same again. I'll never be the same again. Amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with us this morning, a hundred percent, when you die, you're going to heaven. And um, many of you have had the wrong concept of God. I know. I even growing up at church, I did. You see him with this this old man with this long, long beard. And, you know, he's just waiting for you to mess up and then pff, slap you upside the head. But the Bible says in Zephaniah, yes, there is a book called Zephaniah. And it says that he 
God dances over us with singing. Um, I believe when you receive Jesus right now that he is dancing over you with singing. And I now see him as, you can do it, you can make it, you're looking good, come on, come on, come on. So when he nudges you to do something that, you know, you feel like, oh, you know, you want me to do what or whatever, he just know that what God asks of you is because he's protecting you. It's because he loves you. He, it's because he created you and he knows how much you can handle and how much you can't. So whether, you know, whether you're a, a teenager, a child, or whether you're 90 years old, God loves you just the same. And, he's, and as long as there's breath in your lungs, he's got something for you to do. So I want to encourage you. And right now I want to pray a prayer if you're physically suffering in your body or you're having some mental anguish, um, we're going to pray for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that... Um, that you said you wish above all things that they prosper and be in health even as their soul prospers. So, Father, we pray that they will prosper and be in health even as their soul prospers. We speak healing from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, tips of their toes to their fingertips. We speak um, any mental anguish and pain, Father, and, and hard things that have happened maybe through the holidays. Father, we pray that that peace that passes all understanding will flood their heart and their mind as they keep their mind stayed on you. Father, I pray again that their eyes would be open to see, their ears would be open to hear, their heart would be receptive to hear what you have for them, that 2020 will be uh, the, the year that causes all the things of the past to pale in comparison. And Father, the good and the bad, we just want to leave those there. And Father, we want to do what you have for us to do this year. And we thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen. And he even cares about the common cold. Um, if you're ever in the Central Florida area, we could not get our logo to come up. Um, so it's Transformation Church. It's T R A N S, um, the number four, M A T I O N Church dot com dot com dot com. We want to encourage you to go there. Um, you can donate. We have a donate button. Again, gospel's free, but it takes money to get it out there. And we have open doors of opportunities that take finances. So um, we thank those that give, and we thank you um, for that. And we um, tune in every day. We're gonna. We're Facebook Live every day for the next 21 days. I might even convince my sweetheart, Pastor Eddie, to help me. And maybe some other people. In Jesus' name, have a great day. Love you. Have a great, great week. All right, we're going to, can you see where to stop it? Bye.